Hey guys and gals, it's Hannah. I am back for a Power Pop update video. Y'all know I love me some Power Pop. I need that injection in my ears daily. I'm going to be talking about basically collection update, things I've acquired in the past month that I've gotten from generous friends or just bought on my own online during this pandemic. Also, I will be talking about two important people in the Power Pop realm if you will, that have reached out to me because of my last Power Pop video. I'm excited to talk about that with you all as well. So come join me. So let's first get on to the Power Pop goodies I've recently acquired for my collection. Bought this on probably my favorite eBay vendor, Get Import CDs. This is the shoe's first effort black vinyl shoes but this is a box set and let me show you what's in here this is so cool i think i got this for like 17 dollars because it was part of that 20 percent off sale so i just jumped right on that i've been wanting this for a while this is the way to go with this particular album it comes with three cds in here um these two are pre-black vinyl shoes material one in versailles and then bazooka both really good lo-fi recordings this is like a diy band i just love their sound i think they recorded all this on a four track so there's a lot of bonus tracks on this as you can see i talked about them in my last power pop video so i'm not going to talk too much about this but if you want an extensive early shoes material collection then i suggest you get this black vinyl shoes anthology three cd set so i'm just really happy with that it comes with a nice booklet of reading material so yes, well, well worth it. That's the first thing that I've been really, it's, that's been in heavy rotation for me. Um, next, I want to show you an album that really blew me away. I found this in Washington at a record show. In fact, it was the last record show I was able to attend before all the stuff hit the fan, if you will, from the pandemic. This is Pez Band's first album. It's just self-titled. This is a band from Oak Park, Illinois. They formed in 1971. Lots of good power pop came out of Illinois, right? I mean, it's just amazing. So this is their debut album. There's not a weak track on this. Uh, it opens with Baby It's Cold Outside, which is not the Christmas standard you're thinking of. It's not that cheesy song, even though I do like that song. This is different. Uh, Gas Grill is really good. Just strong melodic power pop here from 1977. Very reminiscent of the Beatles, Bad Finger, Raspberries. This is a gem. Their second album, Laughing in the Dark, is on my wish list. I hope to get that next. But this was a true surprise. A lot of you mentioned this in my first Power Pop video, and I sampled a few songs. And I was like, yeah, I hope to find that. I never expected to find it at the record show. Um, and I think it was cheap, like eight bucks. So if you ever run across this, uh, definitely pick this up. Next, I want to talk about Blue Ash, which I actually talked about their first album in my last Power Pop video. Definitely check them out. I was able to pick up their second album, Front Page News, at that record show in Washington in Longview. Um, let me show you the record label. I don't have any other records that have this Playboy label on it. Uh, this is really clean and it was also fairly cheap. What's neat is that it comes with this insert mini poster slash insert here um it just kind of gives like a brief history of the band beginning in 1969 in youngstown ohio blue ash created a sound that was immediately popular and their english affections led early fans to compare them to the who the premier group of that period so that's really cool um and yes i i was glad to find this i've been looking for it um huge blue ash fan they are one of the underappreciated power pop groups, so I like to give more recognition to them. This was released in 1977. My favorite is their debut album, which I featured in my last video, but this is, this is also really nice to have. So speaking of Blue Ash, I want to mention something kind of incredible. Frank Sesich, who is the bass player and original founding member of Blue Ash, actually watched my power pop video and reached out to me. He sent me a message. 
So corresponding with him has just been pretty awesome. He's going to actually send me a package of goodies, which I'm very much looking forward to. If you want to check him out further, he has an autobiography out called Circumstantial Evidence, which you can buy. I think it was released in 2015, the first press was. So um, I hope to be reading that. And after Blue Ash broke up in 1979, I believe, he went on to play for the Stiv Bader's band. Stiv Bader's, of course, played uh, for the Dead Boys and Lords of the New Church. Really talented musician. I have their debut albums in my collection. He played in a band called Club Wow in the 80s with Jimmy Zero from the Dead Boys. And now he's the rhythm guitarist for a band called the Deadbeat Poets. So he's been quite busy. He's even recording a new Blue Ash album with Jim Kenzor, who is also an original founding member of Blue Ash. That's going to be out early next year, you guys. Super excited to hear that news. Frank Sesich did not ask me to say any of that. I just um, thought I would bring some more attention to Blue Ash. And it's just really neat that he reached out to me. The next power pop gem I found was actually in Portland, Oregon last month. Um, I haven't done my Portland video yet, but this is Dwight Tooley Band's first album, Sincerely. I really like the cover on that. So Dwight Tooley and Phil Seymour were quite the collaborative duo. This is an amazing debut album. Uh, they formed in Tulsa, Oklahoma. They're also known as Oyster, O-I-S-T-E-R. Lots of you mentioned Dwight Twilley in my first Power Pop video, and for some reason I just didn't, I hadn't gotten around to exploring his music yet, so I was pretty excited to find this in Portland. The next album, Twilley Don't Mind, that's on my wish list next. I hope to find that later on. This is just a timeless record. It combines those vintage rock and roll influences, and they created a Power Pop masterpiece. So, I'm on Fire is one heck of an opener on this one. You Were So Warm, that's probably my favorite track on here, um, but this is this is worth hearing, you guys. I don't know why I didn't get on the bus before, it just took me a while to listen. Okay, next I finally found the Plimsolls debut album, and this was at that last Longview record show, so absolutely amazed to have found this because I've never seen it out in the wild. Um, yeah, I mentioned the Plimsolls in my first Power Pop video, so if you want to go back and check that out, um, please do. There's just exciting short songs on this. It's classic Power Pop. Uh, the song Now, in my opinion, that belongs on any Power Pop um, mix CD or compilation. It's brilliant. So, very excited to have this. That's actually all the vinyl I have to show. Um, the rest are going to be CDs. I know a lot of you don't like CDs. Um, I've actually been embracing CDs during this time. So the first CD, um, I actually found this in Portland last month, and it's super deluxe. This is their album called Famous. It was 50 cents. I couldn't resist. Some of you mentioned super deluxe to me in my Power Pop video, so I was like, yeah, I'd like to find this. I already knew the song She Came On because that was featured in my favorite comedy of all time, Kingpin. <laughs> that song is on here. This is a short power pop album. I think it it's like 30 minutes or less. It's, it's a good, sweet, short listen. Um, they were from Seattle, Washington. They're, compared to the Posies, they're kind of post-grunge and power pop combined. So I thought this was a really good listen. I'm glad I got it. It's just feel good pop. Holly's Dream Vacation is another good song. So yeah, I really enjoyed that. So someone else that reached out to me is John Borak. Now John Borak is a music journalist, he's a drummer, he contributes articles to Goldmine Magazine specifically about power pop. So he got in touch with me saying he wanted to send me some CDs, which left me in shock. I was like, wow, that's awesome, thank you. Um, John Borak has an amazing book out called Shake Some Action. It features 200 of the best power pop albums from 1970 to 2017. Now, I'm gonna try to get my hands on a copy. I will leave a link to the website below where you can order it or pre-order the updated edition. I think it's been out of stock, but it's gonna be back in stock, I believe in September. So I will leave the link down below if you wanna order that. I really wanna get a copy of this. So um, go ahead and check that out. So yeah, he sent me some CDs, very generous of him. 
This first one I was unfamiliar with. This is Danny Wilkerson's debut album from 2018. And from the first track, I was pretty much blown away with this. Look at that, just, just beautiful cover art. Roger Manning actually contributes to this, which Roger Manning was in Jellyfish. I love Roger Manning's voice and anything he does pretty much. So this is a killer debut. I just love the production on it. The influences you're gonna hear on here are Beatles, ELO, Emmett Rhodes. It's, it's a very strong debut album. I'm gonna also leave John Borak's review of this album down below if you wanna go ahead and read it. But yeah, this pretty much blew me away. So thank you very much for that, John. Another CD he also sent me was this tribute to Elvis Costello, and this is called Beyond Belief. And it's a really extensive covers album slash tribute. So it's got three CDs in here. Matthew Sweet covers Allison. Um, let's see who else is on here. Sparkle Jets UK. The Rubinos cover Pump It Up. And what's cool is that John Borak served as executive producer. Lastly, he sent me this compilation. It's the best of 2017 from Pop Geek Heaven. And it is a two CD set. And right here, I'll show you the track listing. Another extensive power pop compilation of sorts, if you can see any of that. So that was just very generous of him to reach out and even watch my video in the first place. So. Thank you very much. And you guys check out his Power Pop book. Uh, I can't wait to get a copy. So I had this album before, but I couldn't find it. So obviously it got misplaced. I had to get it back in my collection again. This is Jellyfish's Spilt Milk, which is their second album. But if I'm gonna be honest, this is my favorite of the two. I had to have this again. Good memories listening to this. You've got Queen influences, Beatles. It's incredible. This is a solid favorite for me right here. So very happy to have that again. That's necessary for me. Speaking of Jellyfish and Jason Faulkner, although he wasn't on that Spilt Milk album, um, my friend Anthony sent me this Jason Faulkner CD. So I don't have the case, but this is um, Jason's second album called Can You Still Feel? Uh, my friend Anthony sent me a bunch of Power Pop CDs that I'm gonna be talking about. So this is the first one I wanted to talk about. What's amazing is that he plays all the instruments on this album, except for some strings. This is a classic 90s Power Pop album you should hear. Um, See You Again is one of my favorite songs. I already know. Yeah, this is, this is a good one. Thank you, Anthony. Next, I wanna talk about my favorite new Power Pop discovery. When I say new, that just means it took me a while to discover them and to listen to them, uh, but they are definitely not new. Material Issue is the band that I'm talking about, and I actually had this kind of displayed over here in my last video. A few of you noticed that. Material Issue were a Chicago trio that formed in 1985. Jim Ellison was the brilliant leader of the group. He sang lead vocals, he played guitar, he wrote most of the songs. And this is their first album, International Pop Overthrow, which this has been in heavy rotation for me for the last few weeks. I can't believe how good it is. This is all killer and no filler, as they say. Jeff Murphy from The Shoes actually produced this album, which uh, that makes them even cooler in my book. But yes, this was released in 1991. I just love their sound. It's super catchy. I bought their follow-up CD as well called Destination Universe. You can find their UCDs on eBay for pretty cheap. That's where I bought these two. Uh, I wanna get their two other albums as well later on. Um, I also really enjoyed this. It's very catchy as well, but this is the one I have been going back to. It's been in my car. I can't get enough of it. Every song plays like a hit, I swear. You guys need to check this out if you haven't already. I know a lot of you mentioned this to me in my first Power Pop video, but I adore this. There is some sad news about this band. Unfortunately, Jim Ellison committed suicide in 1996. There's speculation that it was due to the loss of their label as well as a breakup he was going through. So that's pretty unfortunate. Um, 
Oh, I also wanted to mention that they collaborated with Liz Fair on the Tra La La song, which is featured on Saturday Morning Cartoon's Greatest Hits. I used to put that song on some mixes growing up, so uh, I kind of am partial to that song. Um, let's see what else about them. Oh, the International Pop Overthrow Festival that's held every year. Obviously, that's named after this, kind of as a tribute to Jim Ellison. So, yes, I am... A very big fan of material issue right now. <laughs> I wanted to talk about some other CDs that my friend Anthony sent me recently. Uh, he sent me this debut from Owsley. Now Brian at Shamrock and Records he recently talked about this in his video because on Run Out Groove Records you can now vote to have this pressed to vinyl. It's never been pressed to vinyl. I don't know if you can still vote on that or if the time has passed, but I will leave a link down below if you'd like to vote for that. Every month they usually have three albums you can vote on for a vinyl release. I definitely already voted for this one. So Owsley is William Owsley from Alabama. A lot of the songs on here are storytelling songs just about his upbringing in Alabama. I really enjoy this album. This is a really strong 90s power pop album released in 1999. It was nominated for a Grammy. William Owsley was in a power pop band called The Semantics in the early 90s with Zach Starkey, who is Ringo Starr's son. Zach now plays drums for The Who. Owsley also played with Amy Grant on tour with her for many, many years. So very talented musician. He had a follow-up to this, which I have not checked out yet, but sadly, as with Material Issue, Jim Ellison, well, Owsley committed suicide in 2010, gone too soon. So check this debut out if you guys have not heard this yet, and go ahead and vote for it for that vinyl release. Okay, next I want to talk about The Wonderments. This is their album from 2002 called Mind If We Make Love To You. This was a joy to listen to. I'm really digging my CDs again, just because you do get um, a lot more cover art. You get liner notes. You know, sometimes you don't get that with vinyl. So um, anyway, Wonderman's formed in LA in the early 90s. They really gained attention and notoriety when they played as Brian Wilson's backing band on tour. So um, yeah, just brilliant musicians. You can really hear the 60s pop influences on here such as the zombies and the association and of course the beach boys but um i really enjoyed this album so thank you very much for this anthony great stuff here next we have the grays the one and only album from the grays called rochambeau released in 1994. now the grays were kind of a super group of sorts. Now the Greys consisted of ex-Jellyfish members Jason Faulkner and John Bryan. Now John Bryan, I don't know if I'm saying that right, I apologize, but he has worked with Amy Mann, The Eels. Uh, he was later known for his soundtrack work. So this is very much worth having. I had never seen this on CD. I, this should be released on vinyl. All members contributed something to this album. Um, however, their personalities, you know, they clashed. So this is the only album that came out from them, unfortunately. And then, you know, they went on to other bigger things after this. But thank you, Anthony, for this. This is excellent. Next is a band that I'm not going to talk too much about. But Anthony sent me this Rembrandt's album. I think it's their second album. It's from 1992. Um, I listened to this. It didn't really grab me. I found it a little cheesy and outdated, but there are some good melodic pop songs on here. Of course, you guys know the Rembrandts from the hit Friends song, I'll Be There For You. Um, this is their album following this album. So yeah, you have to mention the, the Rembrandts if you're talking about 90s power pop for sure. He also sent The Pursuit of Happiness, which I am behind on listening, but I wanted to bring them up. They are from Toronto, Canada. I know that David... Michael, his channel is Naz Nomad. He is a big fan of these guys. So I think this is their maybe third album. This one's called The Downward Road. Let me know what you guys think of that. I'm I'm getting to this, but I, I've had so much to listen to and I've been listening to everything. Next, I wanna talk about a couple of things that my friend Dean at Grandma's Handbag, he's in Australia, he sent me a package of goodies last month. 
So this first one I want to talk about that he sent me is Ken Stringfellow's Touched. Now, Ken Stringfellow is a member of the Posies, which are one of my favorite 90s power pop groups. He went on to make a few solo albums, and this is probably his most highly regarded album out of his solo material. This is produced by Mitch Easter, so you know it's going to be pretty good. Um, it's, it's a little bit softer than the Posies, but very melodic, lots of good harmonies. You kind of get some strings and organ on some of the songs, and it kind of has like an alt country vibe on some tunes too, so it's pretty well varied in musical styles. I recommend this one as well. Thank you, Dean. Last but not least, to wrap this video up, I want to talk about You Am I. And Dean sent me three of their albums. Let me just grab the third one here. Um, he sent me Hi-Fi Way, Hourly Daily, and Number Four Record. I still have yet to listen to Number Four Record, I have to admit. I'm sorry, I'm not able to talk about that one, but um, I want to talk about these two. UMI are a band from Sydney, Australia. Tim Rogers is kind of the leader of the group. Their influences range from The Who, The Jam, The Replacements, The Small Faces. Good stuff. Out of these two, the one I connected with the most is probably Hourly Daily, which is kind of a concept album of sorts. I love the song If We Can't Get It Together. You guys, this is a brilliant group not well known so if you want to venture into some 90s australian power pop give these guys a listen i also really enjoyed this one hi-fi way i'm on my way to listening to number four record but i was very impressed with this group so thank you dean for bringing my attention to umi i almost forgot to mention that i'm getting into the sunny boys which are another australian power pop slash punk group from the 80s and I recently ordered a deluxe edition of their debut album on CD so which wasn't cheap but after listening to it I'm like yes I have to have that in my collection you guys I'm really excited to be getting into the Sunny Boys let me know what you guys think about them that's really all I have for this Power Pop Collection update video I hope you guys enjoyed it I had a lot of fun listening to all this stuff if you guys have any more recommendations for me, just let me know. I'm going to be working on a few genre-specific videos in the coming weeks, as well as a room tour and a Portland record store video tour. So I hope you guys are listening to lots of music during this time. Turn it up. Enjoy yourselves. And I will see you next time. Bye.